Okay, so my server is up and running and hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video on the Golang CDs. In the last video, we saw that how we can create a payload which is of JSON type and send it into a post request. This is most of the time you'll be doing but there are special use cases where you need to have the form data, especially in the cases of image upload and whole bunch of other things. So we're going to see that how we can do that. It's super easy and I'll show you how to basically do it. And then later on you can inject your variables and whole bunch of other shenanigans that you want to do. So it's super easy. My server is up and running. Make sure yours is already. And let's go ahead and create a simple function. I'm gonna call this one as perform post. And this is definitely post, but a form operation. So let's go ahead and say perform form request. Yeah, that's pretty long name, but it makes sense. Okay, we're gonna borrow some of the stuff from there. Uh, the only thing that we're going to borrow is the URL. So I don't want to write it again. Just go ahead and grab this one. But this time it is a post form request. In case you forget that, we can actually come bring it back. And this is the post form. So go ahead and copy this. This is the place where we want to send the request. So we can go ahead and just paste this one. It's exactly the same. Okay, let's see how we can do that. Now, previously we created a fake JSON payload. This time we need to create a form a data. How we do that or how we manage that basically. So we go ahead and say, this is my data and that data is going to be coming up from URL. Whenever you post any of this data, it, it, it can be accessed via this URL package and we have dot values inside that. Now, initially we are going to create an empty key value pair for that, but as the value comes in, you can just inject the variables up here. In order to add this, all you have to do is use this dot add functionality and that's it, that's basically it. So for example, there is first name that is being uh, that is coming up in here. Obviously you will be using more variables, but in this case, I'm gonna be using just the hard coded values. Surely you can replace them with the uh, variables or maybe some el something else that data is coming up. So no big deal, no big issue. And then we are going to have uh, probably last name. And let me go ahead and write my last name. And probably an email is also coming in. You can have more fields as well. So let's go ahead and say Hitesh at the rate go.dev. Uh, again, this is not my real email. I wish it could be, but uh, this is not the case in my in this one. Okay, now how we are going to make a request, you already know that we have HTTP package for that, but instead of sending just the post request, we have a separate method for that, and which is post, if I can write that properly, post form. So this is the data which issues a special post request, which is URL encoded. So we're gonna be using that. And we have to pass on a couple of things. The first thing is my URL. The second thing is the data itself. Now in the case of this special post form, you don't have to tell that my data is coming up in this format like we previously did in application JSON and stuff. This method is specially designed for this. So you don't have to do any of that. Now obviously, as soon as you do this, there will be some response that will be coming in. So response or there can be an error that can kick in. Okay, nice and easy. Let's go ahead and handle the error in the comma okay syntax. If their error is not equals to nil, then we are gonna go ahead and panic out. And let's throw up the error. If everything is good, then obviously we know the uh, basics of it. We need to create content or it can also give us an error. You know the idea of that. And this is all gonna be coming up from IOUtil. You get the idea, read all, even if it is suggesting me now all these lines now, this is really nice. And we all have to do is say response.body. And that's pretty much it. Now we forgot one thing here that we need to actually defer the request or uh, close the request as well. So we're gonna say defer and we're going to say response, response.body.close. So when everything is all done, we are going to defer a request to close the connection request. Okay, let's go ahead and print this out. Should be fairly easy. We are going to go ahead and say, hey, fumped, not like this. Hey, fumped, just go ahead and print it out. We're gonna use print ln for that. Let's convert everything into a string and pass on the content. Very basic, very easy. Let's go ahead and try to run this operation now. We're gonna go ahead and comment this one out and say that this time we want to perform the post form request. Let's go ahead and save this up, open up the terminal, clean this up and try to run this one more time. And it's going to take some time. Obviously it is sending the request or probably we might have coded something wrong. It seems okay, and we can see that we have email, 
uh, first name and last name and we can check it out again that in the code itself when we are receiving this form data we are we are requesting all the data from the body itself so that's what the form actually does but in the case of json you can notice that we are directly getting it as in json format i don't have to do any stringify or anything again if you don't understand this code that's fine uh, that's all what we have this is really a dummy server that we have created but the concept that i've taught you here are absolutely rock solid you can work it out on any server that is given to you or any specification via the server that is given to you so quite a lot of work and that's it for this one and let's catch up in the next video.